We have seen in part 1 through 5 an intuitive outline of the cold fusion intermediate state of two deuterons facilitated by the diffraction of the conduction band electrons. Now we begin the detailed mathematical description which starts from Feynman's path integral wave equation. All of the concepts and descriptive equations are found in Feynman and Hibbs quantum mechanics and path integrals. This is a very straightforward application of Feynman's path integral approach resulting in mostly solutions to the Schrodinger equation. There's nothing controversial here. We will invoke a very often used approximation ignoring electron contribution to the center of mass in order to facilitate the analysis. This introduces very little error in the energy calculations. We, we begin with a general one-dimensional form of Feynman's integral wave equation shown on page 57. The kernel, shown in red, is then given by the path integral on page 35 using the action shown in blue. The action is then given by the time integral of the Lagrangian, and in this problem, the Lagrangian is just the kinetic energy minus the potential energy as shown. Our task is then simply to express the Lagrangian for two deuterons and an electron. We show here the Lagrangian in terms of position vectors R for each particle and the Coulomb interaction potential between each particle. The dot by the variable is the usual convention meaning the time derivative. Before moving on we list the approximations and simplifications used to facilitate the analysis. Number one, we can neglect the electron mass in the reduced mass calculations with very little error. And number two, neglecting the electron mass allows the deuteron position to be expressed in reduced mass form. Number three, because the electron is very much lighter than the deuterons, we can also neglect the orbital velocity of the electron as it follows the deuterons. This orbital energy is very small, less than one electron volt, compared to the thousands of electron volts the electron has in the x, y, and z components. Number four, we will assume, then verify, that the electron stays close to the z-axis through the two nuclei so that we can expand the deuteron potential around x equals zero and y equals zero. This gives a parabolic potential with a variable force constant along the z-axis. Here we show two deuterons and the axis set up to describe their position. This is a generic central force problem using spherical coordinates. The electron coordinates rotate with the deuteron with the z-axis passing through the center of mass of each deuteron. The x and y coordinates are then orthogonal to the axis through the nuclei. With the aforementioned approximations and the just described coordinate system, we can now rewrite the Lagrangian as shown. Note that the electron in the x and y dimensions has the form of a harmonic oscillator. If we let the wave function be represented as shown and rewrite the path integral for the deuterons and the z component of the electron in the differential Schrodinger form, as developed on pages 76 through 78, we get the following equation describing the wave functions for the two deuterons and the electron. We can solve the differential part of this equation as usual to get the deuteron wave function and the wave function for the electron along the z axis. Feynman has already solved the path integral for the harmonic oscillator, so the x and y component wave functions are also easily obtained. Next time we will show how the differential Schrodinger equation is solved, very similar to the well-proven approach used for molecular hydrogen. We will begin with the details of calculating the z component electron wave function and energy as a function of deuteron separation. The x and y component are not necessary at this point and can only be calculated after the deuteron and z component of the electron wave equation is solved.